You no longer need all of this if you've got one of these. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Many of the digital applications we use today like FT8 and JSA Call require accurate timing. Other applications like APRS and WinLink Position Reporting will require a GPS to get the full functionality out of them. Well, for the longest time, I carried a USB GPS device like this one here into the field. But today, we no longer need to do that. With radios like the ID50, we can get the GPS data out of this radio and pipe it into the laptop. Now, in previous videos, I showed you how to do that with the D75. And when I picked up the ID50, I wanted to know if we could do that exact same thing with this radio. Well, it turns out you absolutely can. However, there's a bunch of settings in the radio that we need to change. I think it's like nine different ones that need to be set correctly before we can connect that to the laptop and get the GPS data. But once I finally figured that out, it is super simple to do. I'm going to walk you through all of the settings on the radio, and then I'm going to show you how to configure it on your laptop. Let's go ahead and start with the radio settings. All right, before we can set this up on the computer, we need to verify several settings in the radio itself. So let's go ahead and walk through those. We're going to begin by pressing the menu key and coming over to set. So let's find set and then we are going to find function. We'll go into the function menu and then we're going to come down to set serial port. That's the USB serial port function right here. We'll go ahead and click into that, and we're just going to make sure that that is set to DV data. Now we're going to go back once, and let's take a look at this USB connect. Let's click on that and make sure that is set to serial port. Now we can go all the way back out to the main menu, and let's go back to the GPS settings. Several more settings we have to take care of in here. Under this first option, GPS set, Let's go to GPS Select and make sure that the GPS is actually turned on. Next, under GPS Option, let's go to SBAS and make sure that function is turned on as well. Next, let's come down to GLONASS and let's make sure that one is turned on. Next up, I changed Power Save to be auto. I'm not sure if th any of the others would be okay or, or acceptable or not, but I chose auto and it seems to work. Next, let's come down to satellite information and we want to choose the top option, which includes all of them. Now let's go back, I believe it's two, and make sure that this GPS out USB port is set to own. And next up under the GPS menu is GPS TX mode. Let's go ahead and click into that. Click into NMEA, followed by GPS sentence. And the only one that I chose here was GGA. None of the other options are chosen here. So that should get the radio set up correctly. Now let me show you guys how to set this up in Linux Mint. You should be able to do something very similar if you're running the Pi. If you're running on Windows, well, now you're going to have to figure that one out on your own, but the radio settings should be correct. So the first thing I have done here is I've run this command right here. That is ls space hyphen l space forward slash dev forward slash serial forward slash by hyphen ID. And you'll notice right now I've just got my ICOM IC705 connected. So those are the two ports that are generated by that radio. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a USB-C cable to the ID50 and then I'm going to plug that into the laptop itself. Now let's go ahead and run this command again and we should find that the ID50 is listed right here. If by chance you plug yours up and you don't see this entry for the ID50, double check your USB-C cable. Not all of them are created equally. Some of them are power only and do not pass any data. So you will need a cable that will pass uh, at, at a minimum data. If you've got one that'll pass power and data, well, this is recharging the HT as well as giving us the GPS data. 
Now, this is the data right here that we're going to need to get the GPS data out of the ID50. So I'm just going to highlight that and I'm going to copy it. Next, let's run sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash gpsd. Let's go ahead and press return. It's going to ask us for our sudo password. Let's go ahead and give it it. And right down here under devices, this is the part that we need to change. Right after this byte hyphen ID, you'll see right now I've got this set to the 705. We want to come up and take out all of that data and we're going to paste in what we just copied. So I'll go ahead and paste that in. You can see that it's now set to the ID 50. Press Control S to save that and Control X to exit out of it. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to restart GPSD so that our changes take effect. We do that with sudo space system ctl space restart space gpsd. Go ahead and press return and that will restart the gpsd service. Now, if we simply type c gps, we should get an entry for our data. So there is the grid square populating correctly along with the latitude and longitude. And as long as your ID50 has a GPS lock, well, that's also going to set the time correctly on your laptop. So now you no longer need that external GPS device, assuming you've got a radio like the ID50, which will give you accurate timing for applications like FT8 and JSA Call. In addition to that, it will give you good GPS data. So if you want to use it with YAC and APRS, you'll have that available to you. You'll also have it available if you want to file a WinLink position report. Now, for those that have stuck around to the very end of this video, I'm going to show you a cheat to make this even easier. If you're running 7.3 Linux, you have the option to install the GPS update tool. If you have that installed, simply open that application and it's going to ask you to choose your GPS type. Let's go ahead and choose USB since that's how we have this one connected and click continue. We'll click continue on this next screen, assuming you've already got your radio connected to the computer. Now you're going to have some options right here. I've still got that IC705 here as two entries, but you'll notice right down here, I've got the ID50. So you don't have to do all of that work in the terminal. If we simply select the ID50 right here and click OK, that's going to update our uh, GPS information for us. And just like before, if we type uh, C GPS and press return, you'll have all of that data being piped in to your system. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.